Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the graphs lesson. Don't worry if you missed the first part, the link will appear at the end. So in this video we're going to look at normal and skewed distributions. What they mean, how to sketch them, and how they could be used in an exam. So just to start us off, if you were to measure certain variables across a particular population, such as height, or the IQ of all the people in your school, or scores on a psychology test in your year group, you'd find that the mean, median, and mode are all very similar. And that creates what's known as a normal distribution. It's a bell-shaped curve that you can see on the screen now, in which the majority of the scores are located in the middle area of the curve. Okay, so the majority of the scores are close to the mean, median, and mode, with very, very few people at the extreme ends. So as you can see from the picture, you've got about 68% of the people will be in that center, um, which will be the average performers, and then you've got the low performers and the high performers on either side. But those are extreme scores. However, sometimes data does not follow this symmetrical pattern. And there are times when large proportions of scores fall below or above the mean. And that results in either a positively or a negatively skewed distribution. In both instances, the mode remains at the highest point on the curve because the mode is not affected by extreme scores. But in both instances, the mean is dragged to the left or to the right because it is affected by extreme scores. And then that results in a distribution like you can see on the left of the screen there with either a negative skew where the majority of the scores are clustered towards the right or a positive skew where the majority of the scores are clustered towards the left. So in an exam situation, you'd be given a set of results and using those results, you could be asked to sketch the distribution. You could also be asked to simply say what type of distribution would be created by those results and justify your answer. Or you could be asked to interpret the results based on the distribution that those results would produce. So, bearing that in mind, let's imagine for a sec that a psychology exam is given to three different classes. And the scores of those classes are summarized for you on the screen now. In 12a, the mean the median and the mode are all pretty much the same. So that means that the results are all close to the mean and that results in a normal distribution. So what that tells us is that the exam was pitched quite well. It wasn't too hard, it wasn't too easy because the majority of the scores were in the middle. There were a few individuals that got high scores and a few individuals that got very low scores, but the majority of the class were exactly in the middle. The results for 12b, however, are a little bit different because the mode and the median are below the mean. The mode still remains the highest point because it's the most common score, but it is the furthest to the left, resulting in this early peak and then a long tail on the right. That tells us that 12b found the exam too hard because the majority of scores were low with just a couple of scores being quite high, which are the extraneous scores which are pulling the mean to the right because, like I said before, the mean is affected by extreme results. So this results in a positively skewed distribution. And that tells us that actually the exam needs to be made a little bit easier if we were going to normalize that distribution because too many people found it hard. And then you have 12C, whose results are different again, because their distribution is negatively skewed. The mode and the median are both higher than the mean. The mode is still the highest point, but it's the furthest to the right, creating a long tail of anomalous results before getting to a late peak. So that would suggest that the test was too easy for 12C and that a lot of people got high marks with just a few students getting low marks, which is pulling the mean to the left as, like I said earlier, the mean is affected by extreme values. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So just a few more things before we finish off. The first thing is, is that you may have noticed that I keep telling you what the various distributions may mean in the context of the research. 
and in our case the research is the psychology test that we've given to our three classes. So that's because you could get an exam question that looks a little bit like the one that's on the screen now. A question that asks you what would need to be done to normalize the distribution. Also, just be aware that this is a four mark question, which means that it's not going to be enough to simply say, make the test harder. You're going to actually have to explain why, which means that you're also going to have to understand what is pulling the distribution to the right, which in this case is the high mode. You also need to understand how that high mode translates to what the students actually produced in the test. So you need to understand that a lot of students got high results in the test. And then you need to understand why a lot of students got high test results. And that's because the test was too easy. So to reverse that, you need to make the test harder. And then finally, one of the things that my students ask me almost every time they have to draw a distribution is how do we know how high to draw the curve? And the simple answer is, for psychology, it doesn't matter. It's not about getting the height right for the perfect curve. It's about getting the shape right so that the examiner knows that you've understood what type of distribution is being shown. So for this, let's use the results for 12C, which you can see in the top right. All you need to do is, step one, draw your X and your Y axes in that typical L shape. Step two, establish where your mode is. And in this case, it's the furthest along the X axis. It doesn't have to be a perfect 28 across. It just has to be towards the right of the X axis and the furthest along. This is where your curve is going to peak. Okay, because your mode is your highest point. Step three, establish where your median and your mean are going to be. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's just a representation. So in this case, your median and your mean are going to be to the left of your mode. You can draw the vertical lines in if you want, because realistically, they will help you get the right shape for your distribution, but you don't have to draw them to get marks. Step four, draw your curve. And that's it. Now, honestly, this is going to take a little bit of practice, but realistically, once you've done it a couple of times, you'll realize that it is actually always the same. So that's the end of the video. Distributions is something that traditionally confuses people a bit. So I hope I've been able to lift that confusion and help you feel a little bit more confident with it. If you missed the first part of the graphs lesson, then a link should be on your screen now, so you can check it out if you're interested. As always, I hope it's been useful and please pop any questions in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for listening.